Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, welcome to chapter one of programming in C. So this chapter gives you an overview of computers and programming. Um, so, so that's the first chapter. The chapter zero was about you know introduction to computer science. So those are the chapter objectives here. Um, once we're done with this chapter, you will learn about the difference, the different categories of computer, and understand the role of each component in the computer. Okay, and the chapter will also allow you to learn the difference between machine languages um, and assembly language and higher level languages because there is a big difference between those three guys and um, so to understand what program what processes are required to run a C program and uh, to learn how to solve a programming problem in a careful and disciplined way and also to understand and appreciate ethical issues related to the user of computers and programming so uh, we have electronic computers then and now computers processor chips so it's a silicon chips containing the circuitry for a computer processor uh, usually when you do hardware architecture you kind of really learn about the machine and then you have the hardware which is the actual computer equipment and then you have the software okay which is a set of programs associated with the computer so you, know, you can have many software are there but the software sits on the hardware and usually you have the operating system in the middle which kind of um, direct everything from you know your application to your hardware so the operating system is basically the intermediate here so this one is an Intel Atom processor chips contain the full circuitry of a central processing unit in an integrated circuit okay I mean you can read a lot about it and then program program just a list of instructions that enable a computer to perform a specific task okay and you have many program out there you have C you have C++ you have Java you have C sharp you have Python and all those stuff okay but C has been one of the main language are there a lot of other languages you know were derived from C uh, C++ is a derivation of C by adding object you know classes and object um, where you can derive and you know an object from a class okay and that's what is C++ and then you have C sharp which kind of similar to Java, the same idea, they almost have the same syntax. Now the computer, because when you type your program, your program is in an English languages, okay, because that's what you understand. But the computer don't understand the English languages. What the computer understand is binary number because inside the computer is a lot of transistor and when the transistor is on then we call it one when the transistor is off we call it zero and those can be on and off through voltage you know those electricity voltage so we will talk a little bit about how you move from your English program to your uh, machine code something the machine can understand so you need something to translate your program here into something the machine is comfortable okay and then those are different type of computer here desktop computer high mac and hp here you have your android iphone and ipad here so let's look at a couple of components of the computer hardware you have the main memory here uh, secondary memory and the central processing unit this is where you have all the computation being done the input devices those are devices where you type 
uh, such as your uh, keyboard and that's where the information will come from okay or it can be you know maybe taking data you know somewhere and then you have the output device it can be the screen okay and that's an example here you have a main memory where everything comes so um, wh whatever information is in your flash drive your CD or your hard drive everything you know whenever you need to do something it has to go through the main memory okay so that's why you have some computer you know the 8 gigabyte 16 gigabyte so the higher the faster so that you can do more things and whatever or if you type something straight from your keyboard it's interactive then it's come to the main memory and then whatever is here and if some computation has to be done then it's go to the central processing unit and the central processing unit here will do it and send it back to the main memory and then send it back to the output devices okay so that's basically how things work you know the main memory and the central processing unit here those two guys okay and uh, so and then there is something called memory cell so it's a storage because whatever you type something it need to be stored somewhere otherwise how it's not going to stay in the sky so it need to be stored somewhere and then each space has an address because that's how you can locate where is it okay so it's the position of the memory cell in the computer's main memory and then the content so you have the address and then you have the contents like you have the address of your house and who is in the house so so you have the address of the memory and the content so the contents the information store in a memory cell okay it can be program instruction or data so this is an example here so at address 0 here you have this content here at address 1 you have this content address 2 you have this content and so on assume that you have 1000 memory cell in the main memory so uh, you can put stuff in it okay and that's where you can find the content you know to find the content you need to locate the address and then once you have the address you can find the content easily so the memory so you store program concept okay it's a computer's ability to store program instruction in the main memory okay now when we talk about byte and bit here so byte is a, the amount of storage you require to store a single character and usually you have a byte is eight bit a bit is zero or one so when we talk about bit it's zero or one when you talk about byte it's eight bits okay and that's what is here you have one two three four five six seven eight so this is a byte and when we talk about one element is a bit here okay and this can be one character okay so this is two to the power zero two to the power one two to the power two three four five six seven okay and then you have data storage shows the set you know setting the individual bit of a memory cell to zero or one destroying its previous content okay so you have data retrieval you know where you copy the content of a particular memory cell to another storage area and then you have your random access memory ram okay <clears throat> so this is the part of the main memory that temporarily store program data and result and then either it can save it into a hard drive you know uh, or it can move it into the output you know it, it depends what you really want to do okay and then you have a read only memory this is the part of the main main memory that permanent so it's permanently store program or data okay so and then you have a volatile memory so this is the moment whose content disappear when the computer is switched off so you switch off is gone okay 
so you also have secondary stories so those are uh, units such as disks or flash drawer that retain data even when the power to the drive is off so whenever you finish your computation and whatever is in your you know um sheer volatile memory you can save it so that it's saved somewhere so you can also save it on a disk here so fin you know disk is just a platter or metal or plastic okay and then you have optical drive so that's those are devices that use a laser to access or store data on a cd okay so those are the secondary storage media you have cd flash drive and hard disk here and then you also have flash drive so that device you can plug into your sub port and store data bit as dropped electron okay. and then you have a files name collection of data store on a disk and then you have your directory and then you can you know just how you partition this basically your space okay so and then you have a sub directory okay list of name of files that relate to a particular topic the cpus so the central processing units coordinate all computers operation and perform arithmetic and logical operation on data so that's where you have all the computation being done and then you can fetch instruction retrieving and instruction from main memory now the registers those are high speed memory location inside the cpu okay so it means that whatever is in the register can be accessed quickly okay so it's high speed memory location and then you can have multi processor a computer with more than one cpu okay you can have you know multiple cpu and now you have gpu okay which kind of doing graphical process unit and then you, you have your mouse okay your cursor and, and then you have your function key you know if you want to do a particular operation you can do a combination of keys and so on and then you have your mouse touchpad and you know input device that move a cursor on the computer screen to select an operation like this one and then you can have an icon a picture represented a computer operation to make things easy for you for people who are visual and then you can have a hard copy a printed version of information from a printer okay and then a little bit about network you have what called the local area network so you know uh, those are computer printer scan and storage device connect by cable for intercommunication so you know it can be a local area networks or local uh, network basically okay I mean you can set up a local area network as intranet inside or you can set up something at home where you know it's just local and so it's not I mean it can disconnect it from uh the internet basically okay so and then you have a file server so the computer in the network that control access to a secondary storage device such as a hard drive or hard disk and the wide area network so this is a network such as the internet that connect computer and local area network over a large geographical area so basically um the local area network is below the wide so it means that you you can have your little local area network and then you can connect to another one and then that can give you you know wide area network so the wide is more you know uh, more larger because it can you know move to many connecting many local area networks so yeah so it's wide area network 
and then you have uh, uh, World Wide Web www so it's a part of the internet whose graphical user interface make associated network resources easily navigable okay and then you have a GUI so graphical user interface okay it's kind of allowed to display to allow user to select command and data so you don't have to pretty much use the command line basically a modem is a device that convert the binary data into analog signal that can be transmitted between computer over a telephone line okay especially if the information is getting out of your computer and going straight to the web or to the telephone line because those are analog so you need something to be able to convert and this can be a local area network so local connection of computers and users and printers and you know um, maybe Quincy College can have a local area networks so um, and okay so computer network cable internet access two ways high speed and transmission of internet data through two of the hundreds of channels available over the coaxial cable that carry cable television signal okay this is a little bit network and then you have your wide wide area network with satellites relay of microwave signal so you can be able to connect one local area network through another uh, so you can use satellites here so you can send your information here boom boom and then it's going to reach this part here now we we saw the a little bit the uh, hardware side let's see the computer software now when we talk about computer software you have a brain of the computer which is the operating system and when we talk about o operating system you have two main other windows operating system and uh, all the Nix, Linux, Unix, Red Hat. So those are the two main, but the biggest is Windows operating system because it has the Windows servers, a lot of big corporation have. But you also have Linux. There is other operating system for your phone, such as your 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 Apple, uh, and then you have Android for you know have a phone you also have a Mac uh, which is the Apple computer uh, Apple's computers Mac is based the operating system is based on Linux Unix or the Nix and then you have your software basically which sit on the operating system because the operating system kind of dictate kind of help you know send the information from the software to the hard drive and vice versa and then you have a computer languages those are the languages you use to develop software so you have C program C++ C sharp Java Python and COBOL and Perl or blah 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 there are many of them down there okay so but for this class we're gonna be using C and then you can have an executing a program so means that where the program is ready to be sent to the customer you click on it but to be able to get to that phase you need to compile it means that your program is written in an English language you need to translate it into machine language something the machine can understand 0101 and then from there you can build an executing executed file or you can execute so the operating system so that's a software that control interaction of users and computer hardware that manage allocation of resources so the operating system need to be able to allocate resources to whatever soft application is running on your computer okay so when you boot a computer it means that you're loading the operating system from a disk into memory okay now this is just a command ls is list this is a 
Linux command to find all all the content of this specific you know folder temp m i s c okay so you tap ls this one then it's gonna find all the content into from this guy here okay okay and then you have accessing secondary storage device for windows you know you all know how to get into window you'll see uh, this is your hard disk here you can try and see it's at 220 gigabyte this one has what Ooh, 931 gigabyte that's a lot huh? and then you have other removable disks here and so on and then you have uh, applications those are software used for a specific tasks such as word processing accounting database management playing a game or whatever software you're using that's an application then when you install it you make an application available on a computer by copying it to the computer's hard drive okay and then the computer languages are there so you have a machine language so those are bin binary number code and that's understood by a specific CPU now assembly language mnemonic code that correspond to machine language instruction you can basically uh, draw a one-to-one -one correspondent I mean not a one-to-one -one, but if you look at the assembly language you can pretty much derive a binary code because it's very almost link you know so and it's pretty much close close to the machine because you pretty much coding using binary but it's it's not you know deep deep so when you do this you can pretty much translate it to binary easily uh, even you know human can you know you can look at it so that's why a lot of um devices uh device drivers they written in assembly language because you know uh, you pretty much want the computer to access those devices fast and so on so a lot of those device drivers if you create a device then you come up you need to come up with you know a code that can allow the computer to connect to your device and be able to send information and then you have a high level language so the machine independent program language that combine algebraic expression and english okay so this is what human understand but that's not what um uh, uh computer understand okay and then you have a compilers um those are software does translate a high level language program into a machine language and then you have your source file so when 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 you write your C code when you write your code you need in English language you need to be able you need the language um, the code you you have written to be translated into a machine something the machine can understand and that's where compiler come into play you know so the compilers like you know they help you know translate the high level language into machine language and and then you have your source files those those are the files you know where you have your program written the syntax is just the grammar rules of the programming language okay the object files those are file of machine language instruction that is the output of a compiler you know the compiler make an output so the a link uh, software that, that combine object file and resolve cross reference to create an executable machine language program and then you know people can use it now your id is that's where you can develop your software you know when you write your code you got a lot of integrated development environments such as you know um visual studio 
community that's free you can use it to develop your program you have you know program for uh, IntelliJ and then you have uh, uh, word processor compiler and included and tool for finding error so it's just an environment where you can develop program okay or uh, Eclipse so this is kind of um, a diagram where you can see how things work so for instance your word processor used to type in program and correction okay here so this is your source file and then the computer need to understand it so that's where the computer come into play so the computer is trying to translate the program into machine code so if it succeed you come here if it doesn't succeed then you have error if everything is okay so the compiler compile everything successful you have an object file which is the binary okay and then you can have your object file with other object file where you link them together so you have a linker resolve cross reference among objects and then you have an executable file okay and that's the one you can load and that's and that's um, the loader copy executable into memory and then you initiate execution of instruction and then you can run it and then boom you can put your input and get your result here Executing a program, you have the input data, the data values that are scanned by a program, and then you have the output. Those are the program output, the line display by a program. Okay. So, so this show you the flow of information during a program execution. So you have your input data here. So it goes into data entered during execution. And then you have a machine language program for computing. So this is an example of water bills. So you have a language, you have a input here. Then you combine both in this space where the central processing unit will take care, will run, get the result, send the result back to the memory. And then those results, you can output them, and then you can save them to those or secondary uh, memory. So everything has to go through the memory here, your data, your program, and then once you the central processing unit run them automatically, you get the result and automatically. Okay. So the software development method is you have to specify the problem, all the requirement, and then you analyze the problem, and then you design the algorithm to solve the problem, and then once you comfortable, you implement the algorithm, and then you test and verify the completed program, and then you maintain and update. Okay. So you have. For instance, problem input quantity of apple purchase in pound, cost per pound of apple. And then the problem output is the total cost of apple in dollars. So the general formula here, you have the output here, the total cost, and then you have a unit cost and number of units. So you have those input here. Once you have those input, you can get the output. This is just an example. So the software development method is divided into abstractions. It means that the process of modeling a problem by extracting the essential variable and the relationship. And then you have the algorithm, so a list of steps for solving a problem. And then the top-down design, basically you break down everything in small pieces okay and then solve the small pieces here because if they ask you to develop a big project you're not gonna start jumping on it you just break it down in small pieces 
then you can divide the work between the software engineer maybe some people can can you know concentrate on developing the GUI you know um, how the software will be visualized and then some people can go on the back end you know to develop you know the link between your program and the database and whatever goes into inside so and that I mean a lot of software are uh, a lot of ID allow to be able to separate you know the front end and the back end um, or you can do both if you are the only one down there but the key idea is to be able to break things down in small pieces okay and then you kind of do stepwise refinements so so the development of a detailed list of steps to solve a particular step in the original algorithm and then you can refine the program and check and dex checking so those are the step-by-step -step simulation of a computer execution of an algorithm so the professional ethic is a little bit about what privacy and misuse of data just because you you know about technology programming doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want you have to be careful about people's data so if you're dealing with patient data in healthcare you have to be careful you shouldn't be hacking computers and you know plagiarism and software piracy misuse of a computer resources just be careful so don't steal computers or computer fraud you know if you falsify any information in a computer database gotta be careful there is also you know a couple of bars computer hacking so a virus just code attached to another program that spread through computer disk memory disrupting the computer or erasing information okay and then you have warm so a virus that can disrupt a network by replicating itself on other networks so and you have software piracy you know violating copyright agreement by illegally copying software for using another computer so basically wrap up we saw a little bit basic component of a computer and then we saw the software component and software development ethical issue and that kind of closed a little bit uh, chapter one to kind of give you an overview of what a program is before we dive deep into programming and writing code but these are things you need to understand to be able to move forward thank you very much All right.